Hello. Today I'd like to talk about the pros and cons of the various different tank sizes that are out there. I've seen a lot of questions on forums and groups that I visit from newbies who are looking to start the hobby and they're trying to sit there and figure out really what it is that's kind of the best compromise, what works for them. And so I'll go ahead and kind of cover some of those things here in this video today. So I am going to focus on tanks that generally maximize dimensions that increase fish stocking options uh, because in my opinion that's where it really comes into play as far as what size of a tank, what dimensions of the tank matter most. Uh, and you will notice that I have a tendency to lean towards length and width over height because those are the options that are going to give you the most benefit in terms of fish stocking options. So we'll go ahead and get started. I generally start out with, say, the 20 long uh, on the smaller end for tanks just because it gives you that 30 inch length in a relatively small capacity tank. Um, some of the pros of the 20 long are that it is pretty cheap, relatively speaking, to set up a saltwater tank. You're talking, you know, maybe, you know, 250 to $350 to set one up if you're just doing fish only with live rock. Obviously, with corals, you know, you need more expensive lighting, so that's, that's going to add to that cost. But it's a relatively cheap entry-level tank that a lot of people like to start out with. Um, among the pros for it is that one, it gives you the 30 inch length. The 30 inch length will give you uh, a decent running room for some of the smaller fish in the hobby. Uh, it gives you decent space for say one or two Ocellaris or Percula variety clownfish. I don't recommend the others because they get bigger and a lot more aggressive. Um, It'll give you the running length to comfortably house a Royal Grandma Basslet, which is a small but beautiful and brightly colored fish. Gives you that bright purple and yellow uh, color combination, and uh, they're really stunning to look at. They're very bold in general, uh, so good fish there, but that 30-inch length gives that to you in a tank size that normally would be a bit small for one, but the, the long could handle. Um, it'll give you some cardinal fish options. It'll give you options for smaller gobies, smaller blennies, a possum or pygmy rask would work, or pink streaked grass would work in there. Um, and those are generally the options that I have as my go-to in addition to firefish, although I don't recommend mixing firefish and royal grandmas. Uh, just because the royal grandmas have a tendency to be more assertive towards the firefish uh, in a smaller tank. But uh, so anyways, it gives you a fair number of options for smaller fish. You can go up to about four fish, in my opinion, with that tank without being, you know, overstocked on it. So if you're just looking for an option that will give you a handful of smaller fish, that will give you some bright and active colors, get your feet wet, so to speak, in the marine hobby without spending thousands of dollars, the 20 long is a good choice for that reason. Uh, for those of you who are looking at smaller frag tanks, the 20 long is also a wonderful choice because you have that more shallow depth and so it's easier to get good light penetration there and get good growth for your corals to be growing in there. So it's also a good choice for those of you who are looking more for uh, the coral side of it with a frag tank. Um, the cons are, obviously, if you have any ideas about, you know, even a pygmy angel, dwarf angel, uh, a smaller tang, or any of those you know, other sought-after fish, uh, the, the 20 long is just way too small for them, uh, in, in my opinion. Uh, there are some people that you'll see that run them for a while, and they say, hey, I've had no issues. Well, okay, but, you know, talk to them a year or two down the road and see how that's working out for them. Um, generally speaking, uh, you know, when it comes to other fish like that, I recommend bigger tanks. Uh, the other cons are that uh, 
you're more likely to see salinity fluctuation in smaller tanks and water parameters are less stable in smaller tanks. So for example, if you accidentally overfeed, you're going to end up running into a bigger problem. So it's one of those things where, you know, these are the things that you're considering as you're getting into the hobby. The other thing is, is that realistically, a lot of people um, tend to get bored with smaller tanks just because they're so limited on the different fish that they have and they see the bigger fish that they want. And so they just, you know, uh, then they end up spending a whole bunch of money in upgrades, which you know, is kind of an inexpensive proposition because basically all the equipment you have to rebuy because once you do a significant upgrade, you are effectively having to buy new equipment and larger, more upgraded equipment that's suited for a bigger tank. Um, so you can end up losing the, some money in the process. Now the good news is, is that because a 20 long is ideally suited to a relatively small investment in the hobby, um, that you don't lose quite as much as you would with some of the other upgrades. Um, so the other issue is, as mentioned, with salinity. Um, evaporation is a much bigger deal with smaller tanks. And so you're going to have more evaporation and uh, maintaining salinity issues. Uh, because keep in mind, as water evaporates, salt doesn't. So as the water starts to evaporate, your salinity levels go up. So you have to put in fresh RO water or uh, you know set up something like an ATO auto top-off system for fresh RO water just to keep that topped up. Um... You also are going to have to be more meticulous on your water changes just because there's not as much water volume. So, um, you know, it, you're pretty much stuck with a partial weekly water change. You can't just like say, ah, let's bag it for this week and then we'll go back in a couple of weeks. Uh, it's, it's a lot harder to do that with something like a 20 long. So just keep that in mind. Um, the next tank that I would like to bump up to because in my opinion this is should be the next logical step from a 20 long would be a 40 breeder. Now a 40 breeder is a really solid choice for a first time tank as well because since it's a lot bigger than a 20 long you get uh, you bump it up to a three foot length which once again bumps up your stocking options for fish um, it's still small enough that in my opinion, you don't need to run a sump on it, uh, which is also, by the way, an advantage for the 20 long. You don't have to do a drilled tank with a sump set up or one of those clumsy hang on back, uh, overflow boxes, which has a tendency to clog by the way, uh, and just be able to focus on, uh, you know, just having a solid hang-on back filter, you know, something like an AquaClear or Fluval 110, as they're known, or a Seachem Tidal 110. Both of those are good choices. Uh, if you have more fish, you know, because this tank's probably about best suited for about eight fish or so, uh, smaller fish, that is, if you have more fish in there, then you might want to look at a solid hang-on back protein skimmer or something like the eShops PSK75H or the eShops PSK100H. Um, both of those are solid ones, as is the Reef Octopus Classic 100. Uh, this will just give you a little bit of protein skimming that you can just hang on the back of the tank, um, and it'll help make things a little bit easier for you. Now... In terms of pros, uh, as mentioned, it's got a three-foot length, so it opens up some stocking options for fish. Some additional fish you can look at once you bump up to a 40 breeder are something like a pygmy angel uh, or cherub fish, which is really, it's probably about the only one I'd recommend for this tank, just because the flame back and fireball pygmy angels they tend to be a little bit more aggressive um, than the cherub fish or pygmy angel is. I'm not saying you can't get an aggressive pygmy angel or cherub fish, but 
Uh, I'm just saying that they tend to do better. Um, they also tend to be better about not coral nipping. Uh, so that is a factor. You just be aware with any pygmy or any dwarf ray angel that you have the risk of potentially having a fish that nips at your corals. So just keep that in mind. But in my opinion, the cherub fish or pygmy angel, as they're known in some cases, uh, would be a good choice to uh, to take a bit of a gamble on if you've got corals. If you don't have corals, don't even worry about it. I just throw one in there. No big deal. Um, another fish you could look at would be something like a Lubbox or tricolor fairy wrasse. These fish are, quite frankly, gorgeous. They're a kind of a, a pastel mix of yellow, red, orange, um, just just beautiful fish. Uh, the other cool thing about them is that when they get under a good light, their eyes have that kind of blue iridescence to them. Um, they also, like other fairy wrasses, have the really cool factor of where they don't flap their uh, pectoral fins or their tail fin, per se. They have a dorsal fin that they can move uh, and just kind of propel themselves along. And it's something that's unique to fairy wrasses. Uh, you won't see it with other wrasses or you won't see it with other fish. Um, but... Uh, it's a personal favorite of mine. They can be a little bit more on the assertive side, so I don't recommend mixing it with like another wrasse or whatever, especially not in a tank of that size. But if you're just looking for a single wrasse that you could possibly keep, uh, I would look at a, uh, definitely look at a Lubbox or Tricolor Fairy Wrasse. The other advantage is, is that they're relatively inexpensive for a Fairy Wrasse. They run about $30, $35. Um, so they're, whereas a lot of other fairy wrasses can run between 50 and 100. So they, for fairy wrasses, they're an inexpensive wrass. Um, another one you could look at, it's pushing it a bit, uh, if you don't want to go with a Lubbox or Tricolor, is the possibility of doing, say, a McCosker's or Carpenter's Flasher Wrasse. Um, which are cool fish in and of themselves. They have lots of different colors on them. They have uh, the ability to flash colors, hence the uh, term flash or wrasse. Um, but one of these could work for a 40 breeder. Uh, I wouldn't put any more than one in there, of course, but just one. And uh, in addition to the other fish mentioned for the 20 long and, and the smaller fish there, that you have the ability to put in the 40 breeder. So it does open up some cool options for you. It still keeps you out of the realm of a sump. And it's still relatively reasonably priced. Obviously, you're going to have to put in uh, double the rock work because you have a uh, general rule of one pound of live rock or dry rock, if you decide to go that route, for every gallon of tank. So these are some of the things that are... Uh, advantages to 40 breeders. Now for cons I would say the problem is is that of course still once again dwarf angels, the bigger dwarf angels, you know lots of people like the flame angels, coral beauties and stuff like that. I'd still say you want to go up to a four foot tank for them if you want to have long-term success for them and, and a good chance of success with them. Um, you're also not going to be putting any tangs in a tank of that size. They really, you know, even the smallest tang needs a bare minimum of a four foot long tank. Um, you also don't get the benefits of, say, a sump system, which gives you increased flow and filtration. You can put one on there, but once again, when you're talking about a tank that's not designed to be reef ready from the factory, it does take a bit of work, and a hang-on-back overflow system is just a pain in the butt. So, anyways, these are some of the pros and cons that I would say for a 20 long and a 40 breeder, which would be the two tanks that I'd recommend on the smaller end as far as sumpless tanks. Um, and then in another video, I'll cover bigger tanks. And that's all I've got, and thanks for watching.